Now this is called uranium glass. Most people call it Vaseline glass, but it actually glows under the right type of light. Really cool. You can find them at the thrift stores even too. I've got three or four of them here right now that are Vaseline glass, uranium glass, same basic principle. Now I usually scan the entire booth, something cool in there. Here's an old book. It's kind of beat up. I was hoping for photos, but you take what you can get at places like this. Hey, it's Don. Just got back from a very nice trip over to an antique mall to meet somebody. Took my son. Found some pretty cool items there, some military items. Now, I also found something extremely illegal in the antique mall itself also. These types of things I have run into in many different antique malls as well as other highly illegal items. Now, the number one thing I look for are small items in antique malls, something that would be easily missed many times because of the size. Now, spoons is an area that I can usually make quite a bit of money on. Now, this is from Niagara Falls, and it has the Maiden mm. of the Mist on it. It's just not old enough. They want a little too much for it. If this was like a dollar or two, I might have taken a shot at it. This is probably around 1915, 1920 era. So it's, again, something that I always look for. Spoons and silverware in general have been underpriced for years. I find a lot of military ones in here. Sometimes there's comic book related and character related and things like that. Here's a perfect example. Here's a late 1940s, early 1950s Woody Woodpecker advertising spoon. It was probably a giveaway, even though it's silver plated, this may have been given away through say post cereal or something along that line. Highly collectible, just not worth a ton of money. But this is one of those areas that you can usually find something pretty decent on, especially if they have big, huge bins of silverware. These right here do look to be similar to some of the military ones, but they're missing the telltale marks. That's not how much this is worth because it's 25 on it. That's what it is. And probably 15, maybe 20. Yeah, I don't know. Because you don't see them often, but they're not worth it either. Wow, you can either. Now, it was just priced too high. It was more than I could actually buy it from on eBay and ship it to my house, unfortunately. Now, I noticed a religious charm bracelet sitting on one of the shelves here. Now, these can be really good because there are some items on here that many times are 14, 10 karat gold. The heads of the kids there, there are 14 and 10 karat gold versions of these. Unfortunately, these are not it. Sometimes there's sterling versions as well, but whenever I see heads, whether they're a female or male figure, they can carry some value. So I always check out these religious charm bracelets. Now, here's a little insider on this item here. Now, this is a military shell. Whenever you see those holes in it, that means it has been disarmed and it's safe to handle and safe to buy and sell. If it doesn't have holes in it like that, don't mess with it. Now, this is a pretty interesting right. piece to these little uh, shot glasses. Now, these are what's called trench art. They are literally shells that someone has hammered out inside of a trench and turned them into a useful piece such as these shot glasses. Nice early bayonet here as well. It's just not U.S. and I don't think the scabbard is correct for it. It may be, but it's so well damaged. Some of the leather's missing. It's rammed on there. It's rusted. It has a British pattern is, is what it looks like to me. What you want these to say or have is a U.S., a U.S. dot. That's for United States. Sometimes they'll have the ordnance, the fused bomb shown on it as well. It's on a 1870s U.S. Navy spoon, marked. It's in here. Now here is the spoon. You can see it much closer here. On this side, you can see an anchor on it. That is the U.S. Navy anchor. And on the back, it clearly shows USN on the back for United States Navy. On top of that, this is by Wallace, and this is a very early one. This is very heavy as well. You can instantly tell that this is probably from the officer's mess on a U.S. naval ship. It's got the nicer design in the whole works. This probably dates to around 1870, 1880 era. 
This is well worth the $5.99 I paid for it. This should pretty much get me around $24 to $35 bucks for this. Now, there's newer versions of this, and they're much cheaper. They're not very heavy. They're stamped thinly. There are also just plain ones that just say USN or just have the anchor on it. The Wallace ones I have found are always some of the best ones out there for these types of pieces, this military type. Now, you can run into U.S. Army versions as well, um, hospital versions and things along that line also. But it's something I routinely find and routinely make money from. They made these by the millions. Every ship in the Navy had them. Every mess hall had them. They were military-marked spoons and silverware in general. Now, I just found this nice Greenbrier School. It's a military academy, basically, hat. They wanted 12 bucks for it. I sold just a button from this school for $22. So a hat should easily get me 45 to 57 bucks just for the hat. Now, here's a really nice item, but unfortunately, it did have some damage. This is a traveling dresser set with the box. Probably 1930s or 40s-ish dresser uh, style it's very nice actually uh, for the individual pieces you can see the art deco images it has a bottle to carry aftershave and stuff but it's missing the handle off the front off the edge here of the box itself which pretty much kills it for me they wanted 18 bucks if the handle was there i should be able to have gotten 45 to say 57 50 bare bones on this one here but the box kind of kills it for me now, as soon as I turned the corner, I noticed this rather nice wall phone up here. Now, most people might not realize what this is and why the dial is turned so weird. This is a 19, early 1950s, maybe even 1940s wall phone. It still works. It's made to stand up just as you see it. You can see the handset mounts on the top. Just too high priced. Now, I also noticed a box of what looked to be Boy Scout uh, uniform pieces. I always look through these because many times I run into vintage military, even going back to World War I, mixed in with them and vice versa. So I always look at them. Now, there's also an Alpha Probe from the Fisher-Price Little People line. If it was in better condition and was complete, these can go for $100, $125, bucks, but this is missing too many pieces. Now, this piece is extremely illegal, broken, damaged or not. This is actually a tortoise shell box. The lid of this is a big chunk of tortoise shell. It's probably 70 years old or better. They only have $1.95 on it, but it's extremely illegal. I run into this thing at thrift stores, even antique malls especially. Stay away from them for sure. Now, buttons is another area that most people watch my channel know about. I'm major into them. I even check these jars. Sometimes one single button in one whole jar can make that jar worth, you know, tons of money. You just have to pay attention. Now, this is a booth I've been picking from from quite some time. I've probably been coming here and grabbing stuff out of this booth for, I don't know, close to a year maybe. So I'm constantly looking to see if they put new cards in, and many times they do. Now, these cards like you see here are typically what I find them on. If I go to a button show or something or a big, huge extravaganza, antique extravaganza, they'll be mounted on cards like this. You can pull them off on some places one by one. Other ones, it's the whole card. Here's a card of kind of uh, work utility buttons. There's a few generic ones in there, quite a few actually. Black glass. Sometimes they're in shapes, as you can see as well. Some china, plastics one piece. There's quite a few. I've made, geez, hundreds of dollars from this person's booth already. Uh, you can see sometimes the prices are pretty high, and even at the prices they have on some of these, I'm still able to pull out some phenomenal ones in here. I, again, I've picked through here for quite some time. I'm really just looking if maybe I missed one or there's uh, a new card added in because many times they'll get some new ones. This person's in the buttons, obviously, so they may collect and they'll throw some out here in the booth. I don't mind spending top dollar if there's some really good stuff in here because I know how to sell them. This is like with any other niche. If you know about the niche, you know how the niche works, you can really score out in stuff like that. Finding the diamond in the rough. Now, this was a new card, but there's really nothing spectacular in it, unfortunately. But these are the type of places that I can find this stuff routinely in these bins as well. Sometimes it's NOS stock in here, and some of that stuff can go for a lot of money, like this button necklace here. 
Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Oscar Mayer, the first name in Bologna. How's that?